on the Sunbelt Conference Football Preview. Florida International goes for a second consecutive Sunbelt Conference crown, armed with one of the best players in the nation. He led the nation in carries last season en route to gaining over 1,600 yards. But what really makes Western Kentucky's Bobby Rainey run? And this will be the final chapter for a Sunbelt Conference coaching legend. It's all up next on the 2011 Sunbelt Conference Football Preview. Hello, I'm your host, Ro Brown, and welcome to the second decade of Sunbelt Conference football. Last year, the Sunbelt Conference celebrated its 10th anniversary and did so in style. It was an example of how much the conference has grown in stature that three conference members went bowling. And since 2005, the Sunbelt Conference has a better winning percentage in bowl games than the Big Ten, Big 12, and ACC. 2010 was successful. 2011 promises to be even better. We start our trip around the conference with a look at Louisiana Monroe, a team with lots of returning lettermen and perhaps the biggest surprise in the conference last year. Middle Tennessee went to a bowl game in 2010 but feels they have something to prove in 2011. But first, a look at prospects for the defending co-champions from Florida International. If there was a game that told you how far the Florida International football program has come, Go back to November 13, 2010. FIU went to Troy and put up 668 yards in total offense en route to a 52-35 victory over the four-time defending champs. And with 15 of 22 starters returning, you can expect even greater things from the Panthers. Now we're more athletic, we're longer, we have more big speed. We've traditionally been a very small team. Um, we're starting to look like more and more like a team from the state of Florida, a team that's explosive, a team that's fast, a team that's adding length. Um, we feel that we should be improved up front on both sides of the ball. The player who perhaps symbolizes the growth of the FIU program is last year's Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year, the versatile T.Y. Hilton, who Cristobal calls a special player because he's a builder. You're looking at one of the better players in the country decided to come to a team when it was 1-11. Kind of put his foot in the ground and said, I'm going to be the Pied Piper. I'm going to make sure that I set the tone here at FIU and that others follow. To Hilton, his 11th catch of the day, and his second effort gets The senior from Miami has provided lots of positive examples to follow. Knowing opportunities are at a premium, he wants to do something special every time he touches the ball. I know once I touch it, I got to make the best out of it because I never know when I'm going to get that chance again. So once I get the ball, it's like, I, I got to score. Whoever comes, I got to shake them. I got to break off this tackle. I got to find this block, set the block up, hit it. I, I got to score. I got to make something happen. If your best player is your hardest worker, that sets the tone for a program. It sets a very high level, a high, very high standard of performance that others will follow. And I think that's what T.Y. has certainly done going into his senior year. At Middle Tennessee, Coach Rick Stockstill directed the Blue Raiders to their third bowl game in five seasons, with last year's appearance in the GoDaddy.com Bowl. But 2010 was not a success. Underachieved. Um, we felt like we had, from a player standpoint, um, the best talent that had ever you know, been around here. So says sophomore quarterback Logan Kilgore, forced into action last year when conference preseason player of the year Dwight Dasher was suspended. With three starts under his belt, his coach says there are reasons why he should assume the role. And I've played against a Big Ten team. I've played against, you know, an in-state team. I've played in a conference game on the road and won, you know, so uh, I think it's helped his confidence. At running back, Benjamin Cunningham will lead the way with the departure of Philip Tanner. On defense, three all-conference performers must be replaced, and the defensive line will lack size. But Stock still feels his team makes up for its shortcomings in other ways. They've got a great attitude of wanting to do good, and uh, that isn't going to translate into to one win or 12 wins. But it, 
if you don't have it, you really don't have a chance. And uh, but I like their attitude and uh, got a tr tremendous, uh, you know, a tremendous excitement right now. At Louisiana Monroe, second-year coach Todd Barry saw the Warhawk victory total go downward, but feels rebuilding the foundation of the program is on schedule. Last season, ULM surrendered 22 points a game. However, they finished first in the conference in rushing defense. The wide variety of offensive schemes in the Sun Belt means coaches had better be ready to transition on the run. Uh, last year, we were a, a pretty much an up and down team, as you would expect from a young team. And a lot of that had to do with that fact that one week we'd see something and we'd recognized it. Uh, it was something similar that we'd seen before and we played pretty well. And there was other ones where it's the first time we'd ever seen it. And while you can try to duplicate it in practice, uh, that's a misnomer. <laughs> they were a mere one point loss away from a six and six record. They played a number of young players as 17 freshmen and sophomores started games. One of those freshmen, quarterback Colton Brown, a freshman All-American who netted nearly 3,000 yards in total offense. You know, every team needs hope. Ho hope's a really powerful thing. And you need that guy out there that, that everybody can look to and say, you know, we just got to keep playing hard and he's going to find a way to make the play. And hopefully you have a lot of those guys on the team that are like that. But the reality of this for last year, uh, for us on offense in particular, but the defense I think fed off that also was Colton was that guy who would find a way to make the play. Colton Browning will still have the opportunity to throw to one of the fastest players in all of college football. In preseason, all-conference selection, Luther Ambrose. And Mario Cristobal will be at FIU through the 2016 season. It was announced he has signed a contract extension. When we return, we'll take a look at new coaching faces in the Sun Belt at Arkansas State, Louisiana Lafayette, and North Texas. Welcome back. There are three new coaches in the conference this season. At ULL, the new guy brings a special kind of juice to the job. At North Texas, it's an experienced veteran who was drawn to Denton by significant new construction on campus. And in Jonesboro, Arkansas State didn't have to go far to find a new leader. Arkansas State did not leave campus to find a successor to Steve Roberts. Hugh Freeze is the new head man. As offensive coordinator at Arkansas State last season, his offense broke nine offensive school categories, and he brings boundless enthusiasm to the job. I'm a realist, though, and I understand that uh, with that comes great expectations, and also that the hard part is changing the, the mindset of our kids so that we win those uh, fourth quarter battles that we did not come through last year. This year's defense will be led by linebacker DeMario Davis. And Freeze is excited about the incoming defensive coordinator Dave Womack. Well, you know, we got a lot of guys that have played a lot of snaps over there. And uh, they feel very uh, disappointed in their output last year. They kind of have a chip on their shoulder. And I think Dave's system has uh, renewed their, their energy and love for playing defensive football. And a big hit right there. ASU can boast of the returning all Sunbelt Conference quarterback in junior Ryan Affleck. Single season school record holder in total offense, pass completions, and passing touchdowns. But he has only one goal this season. And he's in for the touchdown. Win. That's it. Whatever means possible, win. At North Texas, the mood is upbeat with the arrival of Dan McCarney as head man. He was involved with turnarounds as head coach or assistant at Iowa, Wisconsin, Iowa State, and South Florida. The Mean Green has failed to exceed three victories in any season since 2004. I'm sure that was probably one of the reasons I got this opportunity because I have been part of putting together a plan to win, building a foundation built on rock, doing it the right way, no compliance issues. New coach, new attitude, new surroundings. 
This is Apogee Stadium, cost $80 million, capacity 30,850, the new home of the Mean Green. It's a commitment to excellence, it's a commitment to football, it's a commitment to the future, enough is enough. We've been, uh, you know, it's, it, we've talked about a commitment, but there really has not been one here at North Texas for a long time. And building a stadium doesn't ensure or guarantee wins, but it sure helps. Coach McCartney is also happy to inherit running back Lance Dunbar, a two-time All-Sunbelt Conference performer with over 3,000 yards over two years, but ready to win. I, I play the game because I want to I be a winner, you know. All my life I've been losing. I never been a, I've never been a part of a winning team, you know. And this whole, you know, it's something I've been dealing with all my life, you know. But I know how to fight through it, you know. Come, come back day to day and work, work hard. Ready or not, refugees. Practices at Louisiana Lafayette are rather noisy these days, and that's the way Coach Mark Hudspeth wants it. He has installed the juice machine. The sounds may not be the Rage and Cajun fight song, but it gets the job done. I probably play it for myself as much as I do them. And uh, we, we all, I think, like, like good music and uh, sort of gets, you, gets your blood pumping a little bit and gets the juices flowing. The former passing game coordinator at Mississippi State hopes to create enough flow to erase last year's 3-9 and nine mark. He says he knows three ways to do it. Hard work, innovation, good recruiting. We just had what I think is one of the best signing classes I think that hopefully we've ever had here, and I think the best signing class in the Sun Belt. Um, and all of those guys have not disappointed. They are, they are very talented. The foundation has been laid for the future of our program. The Raging Cajuns have one of the nation's top tight ends in Ladarius Green, a preseason All-American, the six foot six senior from Pensacola, Florida, who led all tight ends in seven categories nationally, will be a marked man. I don't really know if people play double coverage or anything, but if they do play double coverage, it's an honor to me because that means they mean leaving somebody open on the other side, and um, I don't mind it at all. Now, one of those ULL recruits worth watching is running back Quinn Griffin, a highly recruited player from South Panola High in Batesville, Mississippi. And North Texas will open Apogee Stadium September 10th when the Cougars of Houston come to town. Stick around. A legend steps down at FAU. Can the Troy Trojans make it six Sunbelt titles in a row? And what can Bobby Rainey do to top his record-breaking junior season?